Aerodynamics started making coasters in 1959 and basically invented the steel coaster as we know it today. 16 years later, they flipped a coaster upside down for the first time in half a century. For almost 20 years, they were the go-to manufacturer for looping coasters, smashing records along the way. Aero's demise almost 20 years ago means all their coasters are getting up there in age, with a lot of them already gone, and others on their last leg. Today, I want to highlight the Aero Looper still in operation and break them down by their stats, and rank them by their prime ride time. These are the world's Aero Loopers, by the numbers. If you're new to this series, prime ride time starts when the train starts picking up speed off the lift, and it ends when it hits the final brakes. Not all aero loopers have a lift, so the prime ride time can also start when the launch starts. One of these coasters does have a second lift hill, so that gets taken out of the prime ride time also. But I left in the slow turns and the harsh mid-course brake runs. Those extend the ride time, but will hurt the pacing, so it's a trade-off. I'll also list the track length on the screen, but that number only takes into account the track used for prime ride time. That means no lift, station, or final brakes. Let's get started. In 19th place with 17 seconds are the original corkscrew models. These are all the same, so they got lumped together. This was Arrow's first crack at making inversions. The first one being corkscrew at Knott's Berry Farm in 1975, and there are still 9 open worldwide. These are the most basic of layouts, as you'd expect from any prototype. And these are dead last in length at 636 feet. It hangs around the bottom of the other categories also. 18th in height, 16th in pacing, and 13th in speed at 46 miles per hour. In 18th place with 23 seconds are the shuttle loops. Three of these still exist, Revolution at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, Sidewinder at Elitch Gardens, and Diamondback at Frontier City. This is the only launch model, if you can even call it that. It really just pushes the train over the ledge, into a loop, and up into the next platform, where a second launch will send you through the course backward. You're on the course for a while, but I only clocked 23 seconds of action. There is a lot of waiting on that second platform. This is the shortest of the bunch, standing 56 feet in a 47 foot drop. It hits 45 miles per hour, which is 14th, and it comes 16th in length. I had to double at 635 feet of length to account for the forward and backward sections. The pacing is surprising, ranking all the way up at 5th at over 55 feet per second. You could argue that this has the worst pacing because of that long wait between the first and second half, but the way I count it, it's one of the better ones on the list. In 17th place with 24 seconds is the loop and corkscrew models. This is the last of the generic entries on the list, this one being another popular one of their clones. There are 5 of these left, and they're very similar to the original corkscrew models, but they feature a vertical loop after the drop. That's the only different layout-wise. It does stand a few feet taller, ranking 16th, but it ranks last in speed with 40 miles per hour. Not sure how that's possible, but that's how it's listed. It's also got about 300 feet more of track than the original, putting it in 18th place, but it's the only other model that fails to crack 1,000 feet of prime ride track. In 16th place with 30 seconds is Canyon Blaster at the Adventure Dome. Here's your only indoor coaster on the list, so right off the bat, it's limited, but she'll see that Arrow did a lot with what they were given. It's 15th with a 66-foot drop, 16th in speed, but very impressively, 10th in length, with over 1,700 feet of track. Last time I rode this, I thought it was flying way too fast through its elements, and the pacing backs that up. It's all the way up in 4th place, which makes it one of the more intense coasters that I've ridden. In 15th place with 31 seconds is Tennessee Tornado at Dollywood. This is the newest traditional looper that Arrow built, and even though people love it, it's notorious for being a short ride. It's not that short in length, ranking 9th, but the other stats may explain why it seems like it's such a short ride. 6th in height, 3rd in speed, and 3rd in pacing. Yeah, this thing is a speed machine, and it rips through its three inversions. In 14th place with 32 seconds is Rolling X Train at Everland. We go to South Korea for this one, dating back to 1988. And if you've never heard of this ride, it's very similar to Carolina Cyclone at Carowinds. Two loops followed by a turn into two corkscrews. It's up at 8th in height, and we don't have an official drop stat, but we can guess it's around 70 feet with that 44 mile per hour top speed, ranking 15th. It's right in the middle at 11th in length, but all the way up at 6th in pacing. In 12th place with 33 seconds, we have a tie. Carolina Cyclone at Carowinds and Corkscrew at Cedar Point. These are pretty similar coasters. The main difference is that Corkscrew has an airtime hill where Carolina Cyclone has a second loop. These arrows also have their place in history, representing the world's first 3 inversion and 4 inversion coaster. Corkscrew has about 20 feet on Carolina Cyclone in height, ranking 10th and 16th, and it has 7 extra miles per hour, which is 12th and 16th. Carolina Cyclone does have a little bit more length due to the final helix. Still only ranking 15th, the Corkscrew 17th. And it also has the edge on pacing, 14th place to 17th place. In 11th place with 34 seconds is Corkscrew at Valley Fair. This is similar in a lot of ways to the one at Cedar Point, but this has the airtime hill after the loop and ends with a helix. It is tied with Corkscrew at Cedar Point in height, ranking 10th. 
and it's one of the six coasters on this list that has a top speed of 50 miles per hour. It's still a pretty basic layout, so it's 14th in length, and it comes in at 13th in pacing. In 10th place, with 35 seconds, is Dragonfire at Canada's Wonderland. This is a park original, dating back to 1981, and it's one of those coasters rumored to be near the end of its life. It's got the two loops and two corkscrews, and a really janky, slow upward helix at the end that hurts the pacing, but it's still good enough for 9th place. This is a coaster that makes sense, with stats right around the middle of the pack. 12th in height, 6th in speed, as part of that 50 mile per hour group, and 12th in length. In 9th place with 38 seconds is Fantasia Special at Tongdo Fantasia. This multicolored arrow is our second one in South Korea, and it's got the super rare triple corkscrew, followed by two loops. What it doesn't have is official stats, so I had to get creative. To me, this kind of looks like Corkscrew at Playland, the Vacoma Looper that recently closed down, so I used that as my base. It could be way off, but I didn't know what else to do. I have this at 14th in height, tied for last in speed, 8th in length and pacing, and that probably could have been better if it wasn't for that slow final turn into the brakes. In 8th place with 39 seconds is Gold Coaster at Dreamworld. This Australian arrow started off at another park down under, operating at Sydney's Luna Park from 1995 to 2001, and it was known as Big Dipper. It was moved to Dreamworld and reopened as Cyclone, then Hot Wheels Sidewinder, and when that sponsorship fell through, it was renamed Gold Coaster, using the same play on words as West Coaster and Santa Monica. Anyway, enough history. This is one of the taller arrow loopers, ranking 5th with 131 feet, also 5th in speed and 4th in length. But its most impressive stat is the first place finish in pacing, coming in at almost 63 feet per second. 4 feet per second clear the rest of the field. This ride is kind of quirky. Despite all that length, it only has two inversions, and it takes a long time after that first drop to finally flip its riders upside down. In 7th place with 44 seconds is Demon at the Great America Parks. Both parks were owned by Marriott when they opened in 1976, and they featured arrow loopers named Turn of the Century. These had two airtime hills and two corkscrews. In 1980, both of them replaced their airtime hills with loops, doubling their number of inversions, and would then be known as Demon. These are 9th in height, 6th in speed, 13th in length, and dead last in pacing, covering just 35 feet per second. The big turnaround after the loops and after the mid-course really kills that pacing. So does that final turn before the brakes. It's not normal for a ride to have two pacing buzz kills, so it makes sense that this is last place. In 6th place with 45 seconds is X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is not your typical arrow looper, but my criteria were it needs to be an arrow, and it needs to have inversions, so X2 qualifies. This is their fourth dimension model, their one and only, and the one that put the final nail in their coffin in 2002. Not surprising at all, this tops the list in height and speed, and it's also a solid third in length, with only Gold Coaster outclassing it in pacing. X2 is a monster, and even though it was a maintenance nightmare, and it pushed Arrow over the edge into bankruptcy, it's been serving Magic Mountain well for 20 years now. In 5th place, with 52 seconds, is Viper at Six Flags Darien Lake. 5th place, and the first coaster to ever open with 5 inversions. Seems appropriate. This dates all the way back to 1982, and it's still seen as one of the better arrow loopers still standing. It's 13th in height, 6th in speed, 5th in length, and 10th in pacing. I'm not sure if the mid-course always slows the train down as much as it does in the official POV, but that is a real killer for the pacing. In 4th place, with 55 seconds, is Loch Ness Monster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This is the only coaster on the list with interlocking loops, but it's also the only coaster on here with two lift hills. This takes 18 seconds off its ride time. It ranks 7th in height, but 4th in speed, 6th in length, and it's all the way down at 12th in pacing. Other than that big first drop, it does seem to wander quite a bit through the rest of the course, as it tries to line itself up to complete those two interlocking loops. In 3rd place with 58 seconds is Anaconda at King's Dominion. The coaster is visually impressive, 4th in height, 6th in speed, 7th in length, taking place over that lake and even having an underwater tunnel. But then you see the train go through the course, and understand why it ranks 18th in pacing. That second half is painfully slow, not to even mention the random turns before the double course group finale. That second half is just slow and pointless, and it makes up most of the ride. The section before the mid-course is just the drop, the loop, and the sidewinder. It'll be interesting to see how much longer Cedar Fair wants to keep this around. In second place with 66 seconds is Viper at Six Flags Magic Mountain. There used to be a bunch of other mega loopers just like Viper, Great American Scream Machine, Shockwave, and Vortex are all gone now, and all we have left is Viper. It's pushing Hypercoaster Heights, ranking third, and it's second in speed and length. It would be an easy winner in those categories, but that number one coaster is something special, and we'll talk about that next. Viper does suffer in pacing, ranking 11th. The mid-course does make that second half really slow, and there's a lot of track to cover in that second half. The Batwing, the Corkscrews, and then a long section of straight track to head back toward the station. Viper is another coaster that looks like it could be on the chopping block at some point in the future, and when it's gone, it'll be a sad end to the Aero Mega Looper model. In first place, with 95 seconds, is Dragon Mountain at Marineland. People have called this the steel version of the beast, and that makes sense. Its height is listed at 186 feet, putting it in second place, though it never really gets far off the ground. 
It hugs the mountain, a true terrain coaster. So that 186 feet is actually the change in elevation. Dragon Mountain is the sixth and final coaster that hits that 50 mile per hour mark, ranking six. And it blows away the field in length, with more than 1,800 feet more than the second place Viper. Despite its wonky layout, the train keeps moving, not needing a second lift hill and placing seventh in pacing. This is one of the weirdest coasters in the world, and one of the weirdest parks in the world. If you want to ride it, it's in Canada, right by Niagara Falls. I've never ridden it, but it's on my bucket list. So there you have it. Every Aero Looper currently in operation, by the numbers. Let me know if anything here surprised you, or confirmed something you already knew. I figured that Tennessee Tornado and Canyon Blaster would have great pacing, and I figured that Anaconda would suffer. But I was very surprised with the top and the bottom of the pacing list. I had no idea Gold Coaster would come out on top, and Demon would come in last. Even worse than Anaconda. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. That's the best way to show your support for the channel. And if you're new here and love coasters, be sure to sub. And check out my playlist for more Prime Ride Time videos. Also check out my links below for my Discord server, where you can chat with other fans of the channel, and my second channel, where I post copyright-free off-ride footage. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.